Hello. Thanks for stopping by. I hope your day is going well. So far, so good on my end. I uh, had a wonderful time going to lunch with... Um, managed to get all three boys and their significant others. Uh, two of them have significant others and uh, one's not married. And we went to Perkins around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So that was nice. So today I'm drinking tea from Perkins. The occasion was to celebrate their parents' birthdays. Their dad's birthday is April 4th. My birthday is April 23rd. Today is April 20th. So they try to, or they like to, um, take us out to breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever, uh, somewhere in between our two birthdays as a treat for both our birthdays. So it was nice. And, you know, one paid for, well, actually, uh, the ex paid for everybody because that's what the ex does. And um, the uh, one or two of the others took care of the tip. And the youngest bought us dessert to take home. So I've got two uh, raspberry cream torts. They're about that thick. And they got layers. So I've got two of those waiting for me for, for my dessert. So it was great sitting there getting being able to talk to everybody and catch up on what they were up to and what's going on and and hassle each other and rib each other and walk down memory lane and skip hop jump over different conversations. So it, it was it was a, a very a very fun time. Especially for this old broad. I enjoy seeing my boys. When you spend 18 to 21 years focused on chilling and then you don't see them much, you really appreciate it when you do. And you know, really, that's, you raise your kids to, they get to the point, they graduate high, they graduate high school, and you hope you've laid the foundation for them to either go off to college or go off to, you know, the workforce or go into the military, which two of my boys did. And you hope you've laid, helped laid the foundation for them to have a good common sense, well-being, self-preservation, you know, independence, um, not letting fear get in their way of doing something they might, they might want to try. And most of my boys are fearless. They'll try anything once. Um, so even though you encourage them to get to that point where they can go off and be on their own and, and, and survive, and survive well, hopefully, um, you know, you still miss the mom in you, at least for me. The mom in me still, they're still my boys. Always will be. Um... I'm going to start crying. That's not why I'm talking about it. But, you know, that's that's just the way. That's the way I is. So it's always cool when I can be around all three of them. I mean, touching base with everybody throughout the year, that's, that's great. But being around all three of them at one time when schedules allow um, is just, that's the icing on the cake. And I love icing on cake. Um, but that's, 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 that's it for me. I mean, that's, that's the treat for me, is being with all three of them at the same time. So that was cool. Everybody enjoyed what they had, and uh, we got our desserts and headed home. Um, so that was fun. Um, if you could only do it once in a while, then do it once in a while, because, you know... Life's too short, and it goes too fast. Oh my gosh! I, you know, I'm, I'm sometimes mentally I'm still where they were this tall, you know. Um, but they're grown with kids of their own, and 
on the verge of having grandkids. So that's a mind boggler. Um, I also want to let you know that on the last broadcast, I believe it was, I mentioned AI is in the Bible. Well, I read Joshua the other night. Excuse me, I'm burping for my wonderful meal. I read Joshua the other night. And I found where it talks about AI. And it's a city. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to AI, which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed AI. Now, at AI, uh, they, they got um, tripped. Um, this is Joshua 7, and I just read you 7-2. So 7-3 says, And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, 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 for they are but few. No reason to waste men. Four. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men. And they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shabiram, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. I think that's like when fear overcomes you and you're no longer courageous. So they're telling Joshua this. In 6, And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord, until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. They were really upset. And Joshua 7, And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the land, into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. Why did you make us go all this way? Well, we would have been perfectly happy over there. If we knew what was coming. Verse 8. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? In other words, they ran away. 9. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? We'll have a bad reputation. 11. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded thee. So, therefore, if you know God said to do something, and you don't do it, it's on you, bucko, 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 bucko. Again, chapter 11. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing. I got to check out what the the accursed thing was. Was a um, was where Rahab lived, and when they took out the accursed thing, it's some city that was really so nasty. They said, "Don't touch anything except for." Um, the silver, gold, and vessels of brass and iron, they're consecrated unto the Lord. Those can come into the Lord, but anything else, don't touch. No touchy-feely steely, okay? So in verse 11, 7 in uh, verse 11, For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Verse 12, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. So they had to find out, okay, 
who took an accursed thing. And they found out injustice was, was done. But, and then they attacked AI again, and this time they were successful because the Lord was with them. So that's, That's uh, how AI, and I don't know how it's said in Hebrew, it's big letter A, small i. And I don't know, I have to do some research and find out, you know, what other scholars, historians, whatever, what they say about AI. You know, how it's translated, what it's base meaning. Well, actually, what I meant to do is see what I have the New King James Version Study Bible. And I meant to look up in it to see if in any of the notes it talks about this. Because sometimes it tells you some neat things in a study Bible. It gives you some of the history some of the culture of the area, you know, whatever. So it helps you understand better what's going on. Okay, we need Joshua 7. And time for the old specs. And other crap that I pick up at the same time. So, so 7... Okay, according to this Spirit-Filled Life Bible 3rd Edition, New King James Version, published by Thomas Nelson. Okay. Um, it says, the narrative of this chapter moves between two stories. One of Achan's sin, the other of the defeat of Ai. Uh, Achan, A-C-H-A-N, I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. And I believe he's the one that stole something. Um, 7-1, Joshua had pronounced a divine ban on the spoils of Jericho. Oh, Jericho's the one that they're called the accursed. Achan alone defied the ban, but his disobedience is seen as that of the whole nation because of the Old principle, Old Testament principle of corporate solidarity. No person sins alone. So, one bad apple, everybody is spoiled. Ai was a small, fortified city in the mountainous region northwest of Jericho. And that's all that it says specifically about AI. Don't know how it's pronounced. Don't know its meaning. Well, there's a bunch of little tidbits here and there through it, but and they took the king of AI alive to emphasize his death by hanging him on a tree, and then his body was taken to the. Was he one of the guys who hid them in the cave? I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on in Joshua. If you have a moment or two, go ahead and take a read. So there's, there's and I got to find out about the accursed thing. I didn't realize that was Jericho. I know they were told not to take anything out of Jericho. You know, they had the same restrictions put on them. So... I need to do some delving on that and do a little bit of research. But so far, that's what AI in the Bible refers to was a small uh, city 
somewhere around Jericho. See, I just read it and already it's foggy. I need a drink. So that's all I know. Working on it, okay? I'm a work in progress. It might take me... That's why people live to be 800, 900 years. It takes a lot of work to get to a certain point. So, anyway, I wanted... Sorry, I don't know how that sounded. I wanted to update you on that and just pop in and say hi and um, trying to develop a better habit of... To me, this stuff isn't interesting. But maybe somebody finds it interesting. Maybe somebody likes to enjoy someone else enjoying something or sharing something about their life. I mean, we're very segregated in this country. Um, there's not that tight community feeling in a lot of places. Family is scattered in a lot of places. So the main purpose of this channel was a place for somebody to stop by and just sit down for five minutes or so, uh, except when I'm really yakky, and, and put their feet up, have something to drink, hear somebody talk, even if they're just participating by listening. You know, it's not just your own voice you're hearing. So that was the purpose of it, and to share some of my feelings and emotions and, and stuff, because when you're no longer the hub or part of the hub of a unit, like a family, you know, the older you get, the less voice you seem to have. And seeing as how Tuesday I'll be turning 73, um, you know, people don't regard older people who have lived a long time and they've learned a lot of things and yes it's from their perspective but you can listen to somebody else's life story and find inspiration guidance enlightenment information you know we're still valuable even though we're not part of the you know nine to five workforce anymore We've learned and grown and seen a lot. And so there's a lot of wisdom uh, from years of living. So I felt like, well, how it started was I was taking some of these online surveys and stuff. And this has been like 10 years ago. And it was frustrating because you'd be answering these questions and, and, and giving them serious thought and, and give them an answer and then they'd ask for the age and they go, well, you're no longer qualified for this survey. You don't want to hear from the older folk. They want to hear from the ones who are out there recklessly spending money. And that aggravated the heck out of me. It's like, wait a minute, I'm worth something. Uh, so that's initially what I was thinking of was tea and talk time and sit down and share views and opinions and see if you think the same way I think and if you don't uh, what do you think and and you know have a conversation so that was the initial reason for this and then I got to the point where I was thinking I don't have anything interesting to say but here's the thing, some people find something interesting that you don't. I watch Longhorn Lester, and he's also got uh, I'm a Survivor channel, and now they have a new property, the JL Ranch, and I enjoy just seeing his life. All the animals they take care of, him and his wife Jamie, the horses, the problems, the difficulties, how they overcome. You know, it's like visiting a friend. So it's along the same lines, although I'm more sedate than he is, than they are. You know, they got a very active life going on. So I really 
shutting knock myself down because somebody might enjoy just hearing somebody else talk instead of, you know, hearing their own thoughts going round and round in circles. So that's the purpose of this channel. And if anybody comments or, or, you know, I'll try to respond to that. If anybody has a subject they want to talk about, I'll try to respond to that. On good days, I eventually want to be able to go out and take pictures of the, the parks and stuff and share some wildlife shots or, you know, just uh, five minutes at a, at a local lake or something. So that's part of what I want to be able to share. Um, so I'm working on it. I'm building up my tolerance of myself talking. Instead of taking the easy way out and just going from channel to channel on YouTube. So anyway, that's why I stopped in. Um, I hope you're having a good day, a good weekend. It is Saturday today. Um, and the weather's not too bad. There is a threat of thunderstorms in the area. I'm in northern Ohio. And uh, if it stays not too wet, then tomorrow maybe I will try to mow the front yard. Um, and next weekend, my middle son said he'll try to come over and do the yards uh, front and back. So we'll see what happens. I try to do what I can, knowing that I always can't. That I can't always. Yeah. It's time to go eat dessert and have some sugar. So, you enjoy the rest of your day. You have a great weekend. And uh, until the next time we get together, until the next time you stop by, please take care and God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs>